Um. <laughs> oh, look at that. It seems to be a shark. Speaking of sharks, did you know that sharks had been on this planet since 450 million years? It is one of the species that has emerged as one of the most evolutionary successful species ever to live on this planet. So today, let us track their evolutionary history and learn about these amazing species and how they came to their modern forms in today's episode called The Evolution of Sharks. Zoom in! Sharks first began to develop as a unique species during the Silurian period around 450 million years ago from one of the many bony fish called Acanthodian. These fish are known to be the very first ancestors of the modern shark. And about 50 million years after the Silurian era, the Devonian era began and the very first fully formed shark, the Leonotus shark emerged with an eel-like body and were about 16 inches long. But the first modern avatar of sharks, the Clodosolachi, appeared in the late Devonian era. They differed from its eel-like ancestors and its body looked more close to what modern sharks look like. They were about 6 feet long with a streamlined body, 5 to 7 gill slits and dorsal fins. But they had a round nose shape and its jaw was stiff and fixed to its head as compared to modern sharks. Then began the golden age of sharks, the Carboniferous era around 360 million years ago. And the sharks started to dominate the oceans like never before as they began to split into many subspecies including rays, skates and chimeras. Few strange and new species of sharks like the Stetocanthus, the Eugenio Dontida and the Falcatus, nicknamed the Unicorn Shark, evolved during this period. And about 200 million years ago, with the Jurassic era, the modern shark began to rise like the Hypotus, which unfortunately got extinct. During this era, Sharks began to evolve flexible and protruding jaws and developed mouths under their snout so that they could hunt and eat larger prey and developed tail fins that allowed them to swim faster and more efficiently. And then came the Cretaceous era, some 145 to 65 million years ago. Many deep sea sharks like the goblin shark originated during this period. It was also the time when Lamnidae sharks, also known as white sharks, with the anatomy of what we think of sharks having today, evolved. Then came the Cenozoic period about 60 million years ago and then entered the most famous prehistoric shark that defined sharks as vicious, clever, apex predators. The Megalodon, meaning Big Tooth. They were the biggest ocean predator that ever existed under the surface of the water with a whopping length of around 65 feet and weighing around 30 tons. With 7 inch long teeth, they even used to eat whales. Trivia time! Did you know? Most of the sharks of the planet have developed in the Cenozoic era. The newest shark species to enter the water is the hammerhead shark that dates back about 20 million years. Also, currently there are around 440 species of sharks swimming in our seas. However, all 440 species of sharks are currently under threat from none other than humans. And if we do not stop killing them, then they will not survive in the future. 
Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Wow! It's coming towards me. Wow! <laughs> Never mind. Hi friends, did you just see that mighty beast? Well, that's a shark. Hey, that's not done. I'm no beast, Dr. Binox. I mean, look at my voice and look at me. I'm a tiny little being. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shark. I was kidding. I know you are not a beast, but a lot of people think you are. So why don't you clear that myth today, my friend? That's a good idea. Friends, wanna bust some myths about sharks today? I know you do. Come, zoom in. It is said that most sharks are man-eaters and they deliberately hunt humans. Which is not completely true. Most sharks tend to eat fish or invertebrates, such as squids or clams. If sharks happen to kill humans, it's mostly because of mistaken identity. Sharks mostly mistake humans to be some fish or another animal. I'm sure you would have heard that sharks have lots and lots of sharp pointed teeth. Well, not all sharks have icicle-like teeth. The basking shark has tiny teeth, which it does not even use for hunting or feeding. And the horn shark has molar-like teeth, which is used to crush its hard-shelled prey. It is often believed that sharks are indiscriminate killers. But most of the times, they are victims of massive hunting for their fins, which is made into shark soups. Whoa! Whoa! People claim that shark fins are tasty and have a lot of nutritional value. Which is absolutely untrue. Shark fins are tasteless with absolutely no nutritional value. And if you think sharks have no predators, you're wrong. Humans are their biggest predators. If you actually look at numbers, you'll be surprised to know that sharks kill approximately six humans in one year. Whereas humans kill about 100 million. Now, that's called being indiscriminate. Sharks also help a lot in maintaining the balance of life. Since they are the top of the food chain, they keep the marine population in check. Trivia time! There are approximately 500 species of shark, out of which white sharks, tiger sharks and bull sharks are the most dangerous ones. Sharks have an extremely strong sense of smell. Almost two-thirds of its brain is dedicated to the sense of smell. So friends, now you know that sharks are a lot more than their scary teeth. You're right, Dr. Binox. Thanks for clearing the silly myths about me. I owe you one. Oh, come on. Let's drink some soup. Uh, oh, really? Soup? Not shark fin soup. <laughs> oh, there you go! <laughs> so, this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts. Hey, friends, as you can see. This jaw does not belong to any ordinary shark, but to the biggest predator that ever swam in the oceans. That is, none other than the Megalodon that went extinct ages ago. So, in today's episode, let us bring them back and explore a jaw-dropping question. What if Megalodon sharks never went extinct? Zoom in! Sharks have always captured our imagination due to their dominating nature 
sheer power and enormous size. Even a thought of them lurking under the sea is enough to send a shiver down the spine. But what if I tell you these current versions of sharks are nowhere near their ancestral cousin known as the Megalodon, which simply means large tooth. Yes, with around 18 centimeters long teeth and body size three times longer than the great white sharks, these creatures were the largest predators ever to swim under the sea. And if you are that big, you need to eat a lot of food. So, Megalodon's menu generally included dolphins, other sharks and even humpback whales. For millions of years, the Megalodon had no match and ruled the oceans. But with time, they completely went extinct 3.6 million years ago. And scientists aren't exactly sure why. Some theories suggest that the Megalodons were not able to adapt to the changing cooling temperature and perished due to it. While other theory estimates that it went extinct due to decreasing food sources and increasing competition for that food. No matter the reasons behind their extinction, the stories of Megalodon sightings have emerged time after time as some people claim that these giant sharks never went extinct and lurk under the deepest ocean. Well, unfortunately, that's not true at all, as in that case, we would have found at least one skeleton by now, or we could have at least seen their giant bite marks on other marine species. But we haven't found any evidence to confirm their presence apart from prehistoric teeth that explain their past. But for the sake of this video, let us see what would have happened if the Megalodon never went extinct. Well, in that case, swimming in the ocean and around the beach would have been dangerous. Yes, it is estimated that Megalodons ate around 1,100 kg of food each day. So, to fulfill their daily portion, these giant creatures are more likely to attack humans entering their territory. And once you are within the target range, its jaw would span 2.7 by 3.4 meters wide, easily big enough to swallow two adult people side by side. And in case humans decide to abandon swimming, then these giants would have fed on other fishes. Then there'd hardly be enough fish left in the ocean for us. And as we know, the ocean temperature is warming up again. So this climate would have been an ideal environment for megalodons to thrive and reproduce, resulting in increasing their population. And in no time, they would be ruling the oceans once again. Trivia time! Did you know female megalodons may have been about twice as large as the males? Even an infant megalodon was huge, at least 6.6 .6 feet from nose to tail. Hope you learned something mega new today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. No, little kitty, I'm not falling for it again. I know it's you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, no, little kitty, don't panic. <laughs> Well, 
Not if we know how to keep them away. Well, so in today's episode, let's learn surviving tactics by answering a life-saving question. How to survive a shark attack? Zoom in! All kinds of sharks are predators, meaning those who hunt for food. This hunting characteristic is vital for their survival, just like for any other carnivorous species on our planet. But movies like Jaws and The Meg manage to amplify these wild traits, creating a monstrous aura of them, causing a sense of fear amongst us. Because of this, every time we are on the beach or swimming in the sea, we are always on our toes, hoping not to cross the path with a hungry shark. But you'll be glad to know that the chances of you coming across a shark on the shore is pretty less because these giant fish prefer to live deep underwater and they rarely attack humans. But it does not guarantee total safety as people going surfing or scuba diving are always at risk of encountering sharks. And that's why it is vital to be aware of steps one must take in case of such an unwanted event. So, what should you do if you come face to face with these sea hunters? Well, your basic instinct will tell you to swim for your life. But unless you are very close to the shore and can reach the surface, swimming is not the best option. Yes, that's because you can't outswim a shark. And your rapid body movement will trigger the shark to act on its basic instinct which is to catch its spray that generally works the same way or protect itself from a potential threat. So, to avoid getting misjudged by the sharks, it is advised to remain calm and make minimum body movement. This way, it is very much possible that the shark wouldn't feel threatened or the need to attack you and swim away. However, avoid acting dead too, because that gives the shark a sense that it has won and it might take a bite out of your flesh, which might be very painful. And if it happens to take a bite, seeing no movement in you, do not look at the bitten area as watching yourself bleeding can be nauseating. Then, what must you do? Well, now when you are utterly calm without sending threat signals to it, try and maintain eye contact with it. Yes, just like we pet our dogs, sharks can also become our friends if we show them how assertive and friendly we can be with them. Maintaining eye contact with them will not only help you keep an eye on its movement, but the shark will also think of you as another predator it doesn't want to mess with, giving you an upper hand. But if you see a shark in an attacking position, it's better to find a solid surface like a rock or coral reef and hide behind it. Or in open water, get back to back with another swimmer so that you can see and defend against an attack from any direction. And in the worst case scenario, if the shark attacks you, then you have no choice but to fight back and hit the fish with repeated hard blows on its weak areas like gills, eyes or snout until the shark lets you go and swims away. But even if the shark swims away, you are not truly safe until you are out of the water. 
Yes, sharks may leave temporarily and then return to continue the attack. So, when given a chance, get back to the shore or back on the boat as quickly and smoothly as possible. Trivia time! Did you know the largest shark in the ocean is a whale shark? Yes, and the dwarf lantern shark is the smallest species of shark. Hope you learned something new today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Wow, tuna! Hmm, never mind. Oh no, little kitty. There's no need to be afraid of sharks, as they aren't as furious as we used to think. Oh, really? Yes, in fact, the time has come to save them, as without sharks, the marine ecosystem will collapse. How? That's what I'll explain to you all in today's episode by answering a vital question. What if sharks disappeared? Zoom in! Movies have painted sharks as bloodthirsty creatures with a taste for human flesh who rule the oceanic scene. But in reality, it's not us who should be afraid of them. Instead, it's them who are actually scared of us. Yes, that's because nearly 100 million sharks are hunted by humans in a single year. It means that about 11,000 of them will perish in an hour. And by the time you'll finish watching this episode, around 1,000 sharks will be hunted down for their fins and other shark products such as cartilage and oil. And because of this overfishing, these poor creatures are on the verge of extinction. And in case they disappeared, it would be devastating to our ecological balance and the world at large. How? Let me explain. You see, sharks survive by feeding on smaller fishes that feed on the smallest fish. And a lot of these smallest fish love to eat algae sailing on top of the ocean. So, if sharks disappear out of this food chain, then the population of smaller fish will grow rapidly which will then feed on the algae-eating fishes to a point they might go extinct too. Then, with no one to clean up the algae, it will flourish and might even cover the ocean, obstructing the sunlight to enter the water. And as direct sunlight is how corals get their oxygen, without it, they won't be able to survive leading to loss of habitat and eventually resulting in the mass extinction of many marine species. Another way sharks help the aquatic system is by feeding on the weak or ill members of marine life. Yes, that's because if these weak and ill members continue to thrive, it will weaken the larger population by potentially spreading illness to the other marine animals. Plus, when these weaker members of the species reproduce, it weakens the genetic makeup of the new generation, putting them at risk of extinction. And it's not just a shark's eating habits, but its mere presence can also influence the way other marine creatures behave. Not only that, many sea animals that depend on sharks' nitrogen-rich poop for their survival will have nothing to eat and will perish too. In short, 
Without sharks, the marine ecosystem will collapse, which will ultimately negatively affect the humans who depend on fisheries for food and trade. So, it's important to understand that as much as our oceans need sharks, so do we. Therefore, let's take a pledge to save them by reducing our demands for products made out of sharks and by spreading awareness about them through sharing this video. Trivia time! Did you know that since 1970, the population of oceanic sharks has dropped by 71%? Yes, and you won't believe but sadly, there are fewer than 3,500 great white sharks left in the world. Hope you learned something world saving today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Oh, where are all the small fishes we caught? Oh, never mind.